Greetings, travelers, and welcome to Traveler RPG Headquarters. You can find our Facebook group by searching our name in the Facebook search tool or find a link in the video description below. Thank you for participating in our second annual Mayday Mayday Traveler Day event. It's a day we celebrate Traveler and all its offshoots for all the fun times it's given us. I'm your host, Frank Zuccardi, also known as Cyborg Prime, and today I'm happy to introduce Mr. Matthew Sprange of Mongoose Publishing. Welcome, Matthew. Hi there. Thank you for having me. Thanks for coming. So tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, how old are you and uh, how long have you been gaming? Uh, how old? Uh, I have to think how old I am. Uh, in my forties, I've been gaming since I yeah, since I was a kid. Uh, primary school I started. <laughs> it's a long time. Uh, so uh, where are you from, and where'd you grow up? I live in a uh, town called Swindon in the United Kingdom, about seventy miles west of London. Um, I've been in and around this, uh, this town pretty much all my life. Cool. Um, what would you say your, uh, traveler background skills are, were before you became an adult? What'd you spend your time doing as a kid? Uh, gaming was a lot of it. I have to, I have to admit, um, uh, started off with, um, uh, the old solo gaming books, Fighting Fantasy and Lone Wolf. Um, fell into uh, RPGs and uh, miniatures games, and honestly, I, I haven't looked back since. Cool. Um, in, uh, in, in Traveler style, did you ever attend university or join the military? Oh, I, I did have a couple of um, interviews with the RAF. Um, that was sufficient to convince me that while I probably was the world's greatest fighter pilot, I'd be an absolutely lousy officer, and you have to be both in the RAF. Um, I missed university when I was a, a kid, but uh, I'm actually taking um, uh, doing a degree at the moment. Oh, cool. What's your major? It's um, astronomy and planetary science, so qu quite fitting for Traveller. Uh, perfect. <laughs> yeah, all right. So um, do you have a favorite um, sci-fi uh, style, a book or movie or um, like series that you like uh, or that inspires you when you're planning your traveling? Oh. But uh, Star Wars, that's that's the be all and end all. It, it, Star Wars came out when I was what, three and a half, four years old. I can I can actually remember sitting in the cinema watching it. I can remember the stormtroopers on the on the screen, um, and it's it's kind of been with me ever since in in a big way. Mm -hmm. So that that'll be the major one. What's what's the uh, the aspects of Star Wars that really draws your uh, uh, interest? <laughs> that's going to go from everything from the uh the star fighters to the aliens to um the jedi users to well today it's going to be daisy ridley i have to be honest <laughs> all right fair enough and um aside from uh aside from gaming uh do you have any other hobbies do you um do you play sports or go fishing or photography or anything astronomy uh, I yeah, I, I don't do as much astronomy as um, anywhere near as much as I as I really should. Um, I uh, I have um, scratch built and flown radio controlled aircraft. Um, want to get back into that, but I am somewhat lacking a workshop at the moment. That sounds like a fun hobby. Uh, are you interested in um, in drones at all, or do you just like the the traditional um, uh, you know air, air, aircraft <laughs> style flying machines? I've mucked around with drones, but um, no, I prefer the um, historical scale models. Cool. Uh, do you have any biplanes? Or any? any... I have done. Um, my my favourite one at the moment is um, it's a bit cliche, but it's um, a six foot wingspan Spitfire with a four stroke engine. <laughs> cool. Uh, actual gas engines. That's right. Yeah, I, I don't I don't hold with this electric um, stuff for um, aircraft. <laughs> Cool. I uh, I was into that uh, when I was a kid, uh, but I didn't have any airplanes. I had a I had a UFO. It was like a saucer shaped thing, and uh, it had a a vertical. The engine was mounted vertically in the center. Uh, only flew yeah. a few times, but yeah, it was cool. Um, yeah. All right. Cool. That's a cool hobby. All right. So tell us uh, about um, your what got you into gaming. Uh, what was the first RPG game you played? 
as I said, we uh, I was doing a lot of the solo game books in primary school. Um, and one day we had a uh, teacher, teaching assistant come in and saw the books we were reading. And he said, um, uh, you know what, uh, I've got something that uh, you guys might want to try. And it turned out to be Tunnels and Trolls. Okay. Um, so that was the very first um, <clears throat> RPG I played. And uh, as I moved into secondary school, I picked up Redbox D&D, got into that in a big way. From there, it was Judge Dredd and then Traveller, the old uh, starter box set. Hmm. So uh, tell us a little bit about uh, th that first time that you played a game. Uh, do you have any, um, wh what was it uh, that, you remember most about it what what kind of uh that is that's going back a long way i'm mean, like <laughs> nine or ten at the time uh i do remember that um uh my friend had a repeating crossbow called uh, a dokio um i do remember at the time thinking at the time that is exceedingly powerful and he's killing way more stuff than my character possibly can <laughs> <laughs> that's funny so um so what made you uh what drew you to want to play more uh what was the thing that hooked you about uh role-playing games when you first started honestly it was probably um a big part of it was um star wars i mean i've been living in a different galaxy um for a few years prior to that anyway um i'd already made up i didn't know it at the time but I'd already um created what would be a star wars miniatures game i mean i was like six years old at the time so we're not talking height of sophistication but the idea was there mm -hmm. um and going through the uh, solo game books is it's really just a logical progression if you if you look at it a, a certain, certain way right so uh what what made you um come back to the hobby i mean after that first time you played and you kind of got bitten by the uh gaming the RPG bug, if you will, of playing with other people, uh, or at least with the cooperative storytelling aspect of the game outside of soloing. Um, what was it that made you come back for more? That's a, that's a difficult question. Um, I mean, I've got to bear in mind that we'd had a couple of sessions with this teaching assistant, but aside from that, we really didn't know what we were doing or even what the structure of an RPG was um and red box dnd wasn't awesome at putting that across so there was a lot of trying to figure it out and that might have been part of what drew us on um i mean from red box we went to first edition ad and fairly quickly um and as, as a brief aside I, uh, I ran um a game uh last a campaign last year that we decided to old school it and we were looking at first edition ad and d to do that and looking back now, I cannot tell you how we figured out how to play that game uh, because I had serious problems trying to figure it out uh, uh, now in my 40s. <laughs> in well, no end, wonder we, we were having a problem <laughs> looking back, right? <laughs> it's funny. <laughs> so uh, do you prefer to be a GM or a player? Probably a GM. Um uh, I'm probably not the world's best player. Um, I, I kid myself that I'm an average games master. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, and uh, so tell us uh, then how you transitioned into uh, Traveler. What was your first Traveler game like? Or when did, did you first hear about it? Uh, do you know, I'm just trying to think. I probably didn't actually play Traveler. I mean, as, as a player rather than a referee. Until I was in my thirties or forties, um, no. Th throughout throughout school, I was more or less always the games master. Um, I started uh, so I started traveling from uh, that that perspective. Um, had a couple of group sessions. I ran a um, uh, traveler play by mail um, uh, game um, uh, through school. Um, that that was in the days before email. Um, so yeah, it was. So you got you got me thinking now of um, things I was doing was like when I was like thirteen or fourteen years old. <laughs> <laughs> did you make um did what did you think about the um you know it's got a unique uh, character generation 
um, procedure or little mini game and, and all the, all the, uh, making of planets and subsectors are all mini games. That's kind of like a unique thing that it had at the time. What did you think of that? Well, I, it wasn't really, didn't seem that unique to me because this was, I think like the third RPG that I came across. So it was still all new, all new to me. And the, um, the subtleties of the different approaches didn't really start to make themselves clear to me until I was 15 or 16 years old, maybe. And I started mucking around with creating, um, uh, my own rules and things. Um, no, so, yes, yeah, so, so back then a lot of the subtleties would have uh, just flown straight over my head. I see. So, what what are what would you say are your favorite aspects of Traveler now? Uh, the carriage creation system is, um, uh, I think, is almost completely nailed on the head. Um, the way you uh, you're able to create an entire group and they all know each other. You don't have to meet at the uh, starport bar just to get to know each other. Uh, that is a big part of it. Um, unified task system where basically everything is uh, roll two dice, add some modifiers, try and get eight or more. Makes it very simple, means the game becomes um, almost invisible as you play, so you can concentrate on what's going on rather than how you do it. Um, as, as I'm getting older, that's, that becomes more important to, uh, uh, to my games, I think. That's uh, something I like about it too is... Um it kind of gets out of the way of the role playing and uh, tends to lead to a more smooth flow. That's it. The, uh, uh, now what about the setting? Do you like the official setting? Uh, or do you, or do you homebrew your setting? Um, what's your uh, preferred um, method? Well, way back when I first started, um, I kind of sort of used the official setting, but, um, that was more just so it was a place to adventure. I didn't get into any of the uh, the deep lore at all back then. Um, today, I like it a great deal, if for no other reason, that you can pick um, pretty much any style of science fiction play and you'll find somewhere in charted space or perhaps beyond that will fit it. Um, so whether you want your deep space exploration, something more cyberpunk related or... Uh, something more along the lines of Firefly, you could just pick one sector and, and just run with it. Um, travel fits in very, very well for that. It is uh, very flexible. Um, it's a great, uh, you know, people say, I want to play a Firefly game or I want to play a game like Star Wars or Star Trek and I just go Traveler, Traveler, Traveler. Yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, I'm a big Traveler cheerleader. Um, so... Uh, tell us a little bit more about um, when you became a content creator, because you're uh, you're you're the actual writer of the second edition mongoose. And did you also do first edition? Uh, no, it's it's probably fairer to say I'm the uh, main developer of second edition because it's so heavily based on the first, um, which was um, uh, Gareth Hanrahan's work. Um, certainly one of the best uh, uh, writers in the RPG business at the moment. Um, so yeah, okay, I'm probably more comfortable being called developer for the current edition. Gotcha. Um, so uh, tell us more uh, for folks who don't know uh, who Mongoose Publishing is. Tell us a bit more about your business and what you produce. Okie dokie. Well, these days, um, so we're based in uh, Swindon. We've got um, uh, staff of um, three rattling around in our, in our office. We produce um, Traveller, Paranoia, and uh, Sea of Thieves as our uh, main RPGs at the moment. Although, um, if you uh, wind back a few years, we've uh, we've produced many, many books. I think um, at the last count, we were somewhere around 700 different titles we've published over the past nearly 20 years. Wow. And uh, so you're so you're the actual owner of Mongoose, or do you just work there? I, I am indeed. I'm the owner. You're the owner. So what what gave you the idea what uh, to come up with um, Mongoose Publishing and and uh, and develop these licenses? Well, these well, these licenses all, in particular. Uh, well, I said well, first of all, starting Mongoose, that's it. Uh, it beats a real job, which was a, a primary uh, motivation. Mm -hmm. Um. 
and uh, I wanted to create a company that um, wasn't like the ones that I'd been working for. I didn't want uh, to have a place where people dreaded getting up in the morning and going to work. I wanted them to enjoy themselves um, uh, and actually find value in uh, in what they do. As for the various games and licenses we've done over the years, uh, the one overriding principle that covers 99% of everything we've done is um, we want to publish the games that we ourselves want to play. Um, say Traveller, I was playing when I was like 12, 13 years old, um, was an obvious choice. Paranoia, uh, exactly the same thing. Looking back through uh, some of the license we've, licenses we've done, things like Starship Troopers and Babylon 5, these are properties that um, uh, I've always enjoyed, so the chance to uh, work with them um, uh, kind of leapt at. Um, so yeah, that's the that's that's one of the core principles of um, uh, the books we produce. They've they've got to be something that we enjoy ourselves. That's a good philosophy, uh, and you'll always have fun at work, <laughs> even when you're not having that's fun that's at work. Cool. Yeah, that's that old saying: if um, you enjoy what you do, you'll you'll never work a day in your life. Exactly. Yeah. All right. Cool. So, um, so, so it seems like uh, naturally, if you're going to start your own publishing company and you like sci-fi to begin with, then, then a sci-fi publishing company just makes sense. Well, we started off with uh, fantasy, with the um, uh, D twenty related books, uh, in an, basically, in other words, supporting um, third edition Dungeons and Dragons. Mm -hmm. um, we had a long, long run with the uh, D twenty side uh, before we started branching out into uh, games like Traveller. I see. Um, Paranoia is a great uh, game as well. Uh, I remember playing that. Uh, I have a fr uh, one of my close friends loves that game and would always GM it, and we always had a great time. So um, tell us about uh, the your first publication. What's the, what's the first thing that uh, you personally uh, put out and gave you the initial, like, uh, uh, humble pride of being an author and producing something and having it in your hand? The first, uh, the very first thing I did was a, oh, I'm trying to think of the name of it. It was, I've got it at home. Um, it was for um, a short-lived RPG magazine, um, aside from the likes of Dragon, uh, all RPG magazines were, were short-lived. Um, it was a tactics article for Sisters of Battle in Warhammer 40,000. Um, but the the first major uh, thing I had published was in Games Workshop's White Dwarf magazine. Um, I did the background uh, behind the um, Flesh Terrace Space Marines chapter. So I, th I think that was the first one that where I felt I'd, I'd really punched upwards. Cool. And uh, so after that, what was your uh, what inspired you to create your first commercial title, and what and what was it? Uh, well, you mean with uh, Mongoose itself? Yes. Uh, yeah, a little bit of a story there. Um, I That's got here. together with um, uh, a chap called uh, Alex, um, who was my uh, business partner in uh, Mongoose uh, when we first started. This is a guy I'd known since primary school. The uh, the game I told you about in Tunnels and Trolls with the uh, the guy who had the, um, the repeating crossbow that was mm -hmm. Alex. <laughs> um, so we we talked about starting um, uh, a, a games company. Um, he had um, just come out of the army, and I was uh, I was mucking around as a field engineer fixing uh, computers around the, the south of England. Um, and we had uh, a couple of full stars, it didn't seem right. But uh, when the D20 license came out, we took a look at it and decided, yep, yeah, let's uh, give this a go. Let's start an RPG company. Uh, to begin with, um, all anybody was really doing, with very, very few exceptions, was 32 page um, adventure books to, um, to support D&D. And that's how we started. We didn't have a huge amount of money, so we were limited to 32 page books. Um, so we, we were going to do the same as everyone else, but I suddenly hit upon an idea. Um, I thought about the old ecology articles that were in Dragon Magazine that basically, um, I take a deep look into specific, um, uh, creatures and monsters within D&D. &D. 
Uh, and I thought, you know, we could do something different. We can do a 32 page book based on a single monster type. And that's where the Slayer's Guide to Hobgoblins uh, came along. Um, and that hit the D20 market like an absolute bullet. And we, we didn't look back from that. Hey, that's, a, that's, that's cool. That's a great success, like first time success story. <laughs> Um, so <laughs> what made you, um, and, and then when you, uh, what inspired you to create your first traveler title and what was it? Um, first traveler title was the first edition, uh, rule book. Um, it, that was what would have been five, six years into running mongoose, maybe a bit more than that. Um, but we'd already started looking at various licensed properties um, in our in our first year of business. We um, approached the owners of uh, the 2000 AD comic um, and produced the Judge Dredd role playing game. Um, from there, we were um, able to get a meeting with Warner Brothers, where we um, managed to hook Babylon Five that we ran with for six years. Uh, and we were always on the um, keeping our eyes open for um, other properties. Um, and I uh, happened to get hold of uh, Mark Miller's contact details. I'd um, played Traveller since, as I say, since I was about 12 years old. So it was just a very logical fit. I, I gave Mark a call um, and said, hey, can I give you some money to do a license? And he said, yeah, sure, why not? <laughs> <laughs> and that was, that's basically how it worked. Mm -hmm. Uh, he seems, uh, I've spoken to him a, f a few times. He seems, uh, rather nice and uh, laid back, uh, gentleman. He's, uh, uh, seems pretty cool. A, uh, someday I'll meet him in, in, in person. Um, he is. the reason we, I think we get on well with Mark is he isn't just passionate about, um, uh, the actual game, uh, and the setting behind the game, but he also, um, understands how it works on a um business level as well um and that's that is quite rare to find um within the rpg industry um for actual uh from the people who actually create um uh, the games or uh, in, uh, created them initially mm -hmm. so that makes him very very nice to work with yes yeah uh he's uh super generous with his uh, his time and uh he's been uh, very nice to me so um the uh we, back when you started doing this uh were you working from home or did you have a little um shop or uh ha tell us about the progression of uh mongoose from from when you started what it was like and what it's like now yeah um well when we first started off um uh, I was still working in my um, field engineering job. Um, Alex was the first to go full time, and he was doing that from his uh, from his house. I came on uh, full time about three months after that, because um, uh, up to that point, I was more or less doing all my writing uh, in the pub in the evening. <laughs> um, uh, I, I swear, the first few Slayer's guides were fueled by um, Red Bull and vodka. Uh, almost purely. <laughs> um, that's, it's, uh, it's, it's absolute rocket fuel for writing, but I do not recommend it long term to anyone. And, and what is that drink called? <laughs> uh, Red Bull and vodka. It doesn't have a, it doesn't have a, a name. Uh, if it it probably did, I never learned. It. I was um, part of the pub scene, but uh, uh, no, we um, so we carried on like that for it was about nine, ten months. And then we started thinking to ourselves, we really ought to get ourselves uh, an office somewhere because we just started bringing in um, full-time writers and full-time editors. Um, but we hit upon the cunning idea that um, instead of renting an office, why don't we buy, um, or get a mortgage on a house? We'll be paying much the same thing. Plus, you know, you get a house out of it. So we trolled like that for um, uh, would have been two or three years um, until we moved into um, the office we're in at the moment, which is um, frankly large enough to do pretty much whatever we want we want with it. But it's more like a business office office uh, that doing the house thing didn't work out. <laughs> well, it's as far as the local council is concerned. Yes, if you step in here. Um, you'd see it's immediately it's not a normal office. Uh, I'm just looking across at the moment. 
There's um, a big gaming table, miniatures, cabinets, shelves full of um, Star Wars toys. <laughs> um, go next door, we've got um, a dozen um, miniatures war gaming tables uh, permanently set up. Um, so, I mean, that just goes to back to what I said earlier. I didn't want this to be a normal company in the first place. Uh, yeah, it sounds like many people's dreams job. <laughs> well, we have, um, you, see, yeah, you say that, we do go on um, regular office trips, um, whether it's to, um, I don't know, we've done um, uh, museums, they did the Doctor Who experience in Cardiff, um, done the local castles and uh, wildlife parks. Um, and I'm trying to, currently trying to save up some pennies so I can take everyone to Galaxy's Edge in a couple of years' time. We'll have to see how that goes. Hey, that sounds like a great place to work. Um, uh, I <laughs> tried to do something similar with my employees uh, from my computer business. I would take them to, we would go uh, on outings to go, field trips to the movies to go see science fiction shows or whatever. It builds camaraderie and, um, you know, if it's a bus- and it's a business expense, so... <laughs> There you go. This is true. I've, I've, I've taken the whole stuff up to every new Star Wars film since uh, Force Awakens. Um, we always made um, a bit of a, a day of that. So we come in the morning, somebody makes pancakes while we put uh, one of the older Star Wars films on, go and see the film, uh, come back, play Star Wars games, and then in the evening uh, go and have dinner and um, uh, discuss everything we've done during the day. That's uh, that's our Star Wars day. We do it once a year. Oh, what a rat race. <laughs> yes sounds terrible to work for you guys pancakes <laughs> all right so <laughs> um so that's great that's uh um uh, uh a good fortune for your business so uh what's uh what's your fa- what's your personal favorite type of uh content to produce do you like to do uh like rules or uh maps or modules or do you like to write um, flavored text and things what's your if you could spend all day doing just one thing what would it be it's it's across the board um uh, you can't really separate stuff like that out um uh, in an rpg because it's all interconnected and you can extend that um and put uh, things like miniatures games and um the short stories and what have you in the same mix because it's all building towards uh, a, a larger whole so no as long as it's got um uh, one of our games titles on the front i'm uh, pretty much happy to uh, uh to work on it all right fair enough so um i was looking at your listing and um throw through rpg and it's pretty extensive so where do you find the time and uh, inspiration to be so productive? Like, how can you be so prolific? <laughs> well, no, this is, this is a full-time job and it has been for um, best part of uh, 20 years. Um, uh, you get to do so much because you're working a minimum of eight hours a day uh, doing it. And of course, you've always got the option to um, uh, work into the evenings and over the weekends. Um, and because it's something you enjoy doing, that's never a hassle. That's a good way to look at it. Um, definitely putting time into something, a project every day, uh, definitely makes it progress. Um, so, tell us uh, what you've been up to this past year. Do you um, do you have a uh, gaming group that you play with outside of uh, uh, outside of the mongoose crew? Like, um, do you have friends that you play with on the weekends, at, or uh, do your I'm friends pretty much work with you? <laughs> but no, it's, it's it's a bit of both. Um, uh, I mean, outside the uh, company, it tends to be more along the lines of uh, miniatures games. Um, but just to uh, further annoy anybody who doesn't work at Mongoose, every Friday afternoon, we uh, down tools and um, play RPGs. Um, as, uh, as a company rule, you've, you've got to play games. Um, so uh, towards the end of last year, we were playing through, again, the um, Belt Strike campaign. Um, for Traveller, um, which really got me thinking that we ought to update that to second edition. Um, over Christmas, we had a couple of sessions of uh, the old original Ghostbusters role-playing game. Okay. And this year, we've been playing Star Wars Saga Edition, going through the Dawn of Defiance campaign. Uh, well, that's a nice way to have casual Fridays. <laughs> everyone bring your special hat that you wear for your <laughs> for your character um that would be uh that would be fun <laughs> dress up like your character day 
Um, so, uh, what about, um, do you guys have a, uh, local gaming store where you live? Um, uh, there is uh, one got opened late last year. I haven't actually been there yet and it's, um, less than a mile from my house. So mm-hmm. yeah, we have Firestorm games here. We have, um, uh, the local games workshop store, of course. Uh, but we also have our own area, uh, here, I'd say, um, next door to the main office we've got a dozen uh, gaming tables uh set up every tuesday evening the uh, local club comes around and uh, packs the place out and it's a mix of games uh from any, everything from warhammer to uh there's there is actually a, a traveler group um running at the moment um so yeah so we're, we're a bit different because the uh we don't go to the games they come to us <laughs> that's awesome it's good to provide a, uh, I'm, I'm into um, cultivating uh, uh, groups. And so it's good to be able to provide a gaming space or gaming expertise or whatever to uh, people who are interested. Um, and I, I appreciate that you do that. That's awesome. Um, what about uh, conventions? Did you go to any conventions this last year? Are there conventions you never yeah, miss? Yeah, we used to go to a lot of conventions. Um uh in this country most gaming conventions taste to be, tend to be based around miniatures uh and while we ran miniatures games ourselves we used to try and hit as many as we as many as we could um we also did the big ones in america uh origins gen con and uh the gamma trade show over the past few years we have really wound that back um mostly because i don't like traveling very much um, but we did do Dragon Meat at the end of last year, which is the big um, RPG convention in London. All right. And then uh, what about production this last year? Did you uh, work on any big uh, uh, titles that you're uh, planning, mm. that you either just put out or are planning to put out soon? Uh, well, the what we've been trying to do with Traveller since we brought the core rulebook out is every time we have a major release, um, we try and raise the bar at least a little, whether it's um, in production values or um, concepts or um, sophistication rules, whatever. We always try and raise the bar. Um, so when we brought out Pirates of Drenax, we were scratching our heads wondering exactly how we were going to um, beat that in terms of uh, the grand campaign. Uh, and late last year, we ran a Kickstarter for uh, Deep Night Revelation which was originally um, conceptualized as a five-year deep space mission. It's ended up being a 20-year in-game um, uh, deep space mission uh, that's taken up one big box set and six um, hardback expansion books. Um, we've, I've just finished editing the third of those books, and um, any day now the fourth one's going to uh, drop through. So that's that's the big project that I've been working on for the um, uh, past three or four months. Uh, that's an ambitious project. Oh no! It gives us another problem. How do we beat that? Right. <laughs> Stop beating that. <laughs> don't don't set the bar so high. Maybe I don't know. So um, I mean, we're all, we're always going to set the bar high. <laughs> It's a, it's it's good to have goals like that. So, um, uh, uh, tell us about your uh, your feature product. What's your uh, what's your thing that you're uh, your biggest seller right now? Or 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 you know, if you have more than one, uh, let's hear about you know maybe your your top three best products, uh, most loved products from Mongoose. In terms of um, best sales, the um, obviously it's going to be the um, uh, the core rule, rule books for the core rule book itself, along with the starter set and books like Central Supply Catalog and uh, uh, High Guard. Um, but I think the one that's got people talking the most um, over the past couple of years has been Pirates of Drenax. Um big slipcase campaign three hardbacks in there, four and a half kilograms, which makes it an absolute nightmare to ship overseas. <laughs> um, but it's, there's enough material in, in there. It's a, it's a true open sandbox campaign. 
Um, I have known groups that have been um, playing for two years solid, meeting up every week, and they're not even halfway through it. Um, so, yeah, we're quite proud of that one. Wow, that's a lot of content. What what kinds of... Uh... We, couldn't, we couldn't stop there. It ends up being, was it something like 400 pages in this uh, slipcase, or 450, I think. But we've um, put out, um, I think it's just under 20, we call them downloadable contents, um, additions for uh, uh, for the campaign. So um, expanding pa uh, certain patrons into full adventures, uh, focusing on the ship, um, doing starship encounters, but um, uh, in the vein of them being a potential prey for pirates. And I've just remembered, actually, we're going to be releasing in the next what couple of months two more hardbacks for um, the Pirates of Dranax. The Dranaxian Companion, which compiles a lot of the DLC and adds a, a shed load more material. And the Shadows of Sindel, which is a bolt-on mini campaign that fits within the greater campaign. So um, if a, if a two-year campaign isn't good enough for you, we, we got you covered. <laughs> <laughs> what kinds of what kinds of things will they find in these source books? Uh, will cut will uh, players find in these source books? Uh, uh, what like uh, what's the uh, best we, features and benefits that like GMs and players okay. will find in this? Yeah, well, the um, we started with the obvious stuff, taking um, things in the main campaign that were mentioned, just had sideways mentions, um, and expanding them out into um, either full encounters or in some cases full blown adventures. Um, but we've also gone into a lot more detail on the, um, the Harrier, which is the main ship that the players start with. Um, so there's a lot more customization you can do to, um, uh, do to the ship. Um, but we've also in the, uh, companion book, um, added things like, um, uh, solid faction rules, uh, because as you're pirating your way across all these different systems, there's going to be some people you annoy and some that you want to work with. And now the um, referee is going to have a solid framework to actually plot player, players' actions and work out what effect that's going to have across multiple systems um, and doing it all without making the referee's head explode. That's that's good. <laughs> as a referee, I appreciate that. Uh, I don't like head exploding. Um... So. One of the um, one of the principles we work with is um, uh, we always um, write our books with the lazy referee in mind, um, which I I fully count myself as one of them. So we want mm -hmm. the referee to do as little work as possible to put the best game across. Um, so yeah, we'll always put these little um, tidbits in for a traveller just to make the game flow a lot easier. Um, but as, as an aside, we took this to a new level with Paranoia. Um, the current edition doesn't require the Games Master to learn any rules whatsoever. Uh, all the rules get pushed onto the players, even the combat. The whole combat system is run by the players. The Games Master is just there to put his feet up on the table and uh, make the uh, players' lives more difficult. Um, that's, that's his sole reason for being there. <laughs> <laughs> ah, the lazy G, the game for lazy GMs. I like that. That should be a tagline <laughs> somewhere on the book. <laughs> so, um, so what are your plans for this next year? Do you have? Uh, are you gonna hit some more conventions or? Uh, 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 what, yeah, this. A, go on. Yeah, for the past couple of years, we've had um. A list every, every at the end of every year we do a state of the mongoose address which is a few thousand words describing everything that's happened in the year and what we're hoping to achieve in the uh, forthcoming year uh, and we've had this list of um, traveler books that uh, we said we want to um, uh, bring out and for one reason or another they just haven't come come out we've got distracted with um, other projects um, or other projects have um, grown into a size far larger than we'd uh, we had expected. Um, uh, the Great Rift um, uh, box set and uh, Deep Night Revelation campaign were very good examples of that. So this year um, we, det we determined that it was going to be all about bringing out every single one of those books that we promised that we've been promising for um, uh, for so long. So 
those two uh, Pirates of Strahd support books, they're um, uh, going to be the first ones up. We're going to be bringing out two volumes of Aliens of Charted Space, so you can finally play your um, uh, Vargir or uh, Zodani or Solomon or any of the major races properly in the, uh, in the current edition. Um, we're going to be working on, finally, the um, first of the new Fifth Frontier War range. Um, plus, I want to start, I've just been editing uh, recently, um, expanding out and exploring the, uh, the Soleimani front area of charted space. So we've, yeah, this, this year is all, all about um, catching up and getting some good quality traveler books out there. Awesome. I can't wait to see them. So um, how can people um, find your products? you have a website, social media? Yeah, website's uh, the very plus, best place, mongoosepublishing.com. Um, from there, you'll find links to um, to our forums, to our Facebook page. We do have a, a Twitter account. But um, uh, no, if you want to uh, find things out, um, yeah, keep an eye on our front page. All right, cool. Well, that's the end of our interview. Um, thanks, Matthew, okay. for Thank uh, sitting for this interview and uh, telling us more about Mongoose and uh, the product that we all love to play. You're more than welcome. Thanks for having me. So I'm your host, Frank Sucardi, also known as Cyborg Prime, and I've been talking with Mr. Matthew Sprange of Mongoose Publishing. Pick up copies of his new books at the Mongoose website, which is... Uh, mongoosepublishing.com. Mongoosepublishing.com. Thanks. And uh, thank you, dear listener, for joining us today. As always, you can find us on Facebook under Traveler RPG Headquarters, and I look forward to meeting you there. Until next time, travelers, happy traveling.